do the entire chapter tonight. Uh, it's two and a quarter pages, so it's uh, 13 verses. And uh, pretty good stuff. I was going through it tonight and highlighting some things that I want to talk about. And uh, <clears throat> so um, speaks of the high priest and our mediator, Jesus Christ. And, uh, does anybody got to take a bathroom break? Is going out? Oh, Whatever holds your peace. <laughs> and uh, if I could, uh, Lacey's got the extra verses. And uh, thank you, Lacey. And uh, if anyone wants to read the uh, King James uh, straight through, then we'll open in prayer. Hebrews chapter 8. Christ the high priest. One. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven, to the minister of the sanctuary and of the true church tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Three, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer for it. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, by who serve unto the example and shadow the heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. The new covenant. Six, but now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Seven, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Eight, for finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Nine, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Then for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Amen. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, know the Lord, and for all shall know him, know me, for the least to the greatest. Well, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. 13, the last verse, and that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and the waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yep. Praise the Lord. And that kind of sums it up, doesn't it? And uh, we're going to go through that here in just a moment. And uh, so let's uh, let's open in prayer, and uh, then we'll get into the study, and then we'll uh, get a prayer request. So, Father in heaven, hallelujah. Father, I pray right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that your Spirit be present with us tonight, Lord, to lead and guide us, to give us revelation, to teach us. Hallelujah. So, Lord, let your spirit be moving and operating in this house tonight. Let your spirit have control of this. Lord, that we teach this and preach this in truth. And, Lord, that anoint them to receive it. And I pray, Lord, that you, uh, that you are exalted here tonight. And I ask in the mighty name of Jesus for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so Hebrews 8, verse 1, says, High priest. It says, uh, <clears throat> Christ our high priest, 
Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. It refers to what Paul will now give as it regards the meaning of all of this. We have such a, a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. The very fact that Christ is now seated in the heavens at the right hand of God proves his work is a finished work. That's important. He is now resting at the right hand of the Father. He is in complete rest because his work is done. And he did it all for us. Amen. Amen. It is completed, accepted by a thrice holy God. So does everyone understand what we mean by the finished works? They may not understand. They may have a question about that. Okay, basically it speaks of what Jesus did at Calvary. He laid down his life. And it, and it, and it, and it all includes the, the crown of thorns, the whipping, the beating of the whipping post when he took, I believe, 40 laps. Uh, the nails in his hands, the holes in his feet, the spear in his side, everything. And so uh, he was the Lamb of God. And uh, uh, <clears throat> Verse 2 says, a minister of the sanctuary. As Paul uses the word minister, it speaks both of priestly service to God and of service to man. He did it all for humanity, for man. And so he is service to God and of excuse me, service to God and of service to man and the true tabernacle, the true dwelling place of God, which is in the heaven, the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. This refers to the fact that Moses pitched the earthly tabernacle, but God formed the true tabernacle. Does that make sense? The heavenly, I uh, guess heaven, you would say. And uh, so the tabernacle was always a foreshadow of Christ. It was a type of Christ. If you know, the tabernacle didn't look all that appealing from the outside, did it? But it was beautiful on the inside, which describes Christ. He didn't look all that appealing there hanging on the cross, did he? Covered in blood and, you know, uh, given his life. And uh, people were basically saying, uh, if he's true, if you're the know, Son of God, why bring yourself down from there? Well, that wasn't what he was called to do. And, uh, <clears throat> what's uh, where are we at on this? It says, wherefore it is of necessity of that this man, or, we, or no, we're starting at three, I'm sorry. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, portrays the high priest of old, serving as mediators between God and men. This is what the old high priest of old did. They served as mediators between God and men. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man, Christ Jesus, have somewhat also to offer. A priest must have a sacrifice to offer. Christ offered himself, the ultimate offering. Christ was the uh, sacrifice, or he was the sin offering, let's put it that way. And uh, Christ offered himself. This was one, this was his one great and all embracing sacrifice, satisfying all the types of the old covenant and abolishing all its offerings for sin. There was no more offerings needed for sin because Christ died and took everything, took every sin upon himself and atoned all sins if man will just simply <coughs> ask forgiveness. That's all that's required. Repent. Repent. It's that simple. And uh, For if he, the Lord Jesus, were on earth, he should not be a priest. Refers to the fact that he was not of the Levitical order, and due to the sacrifice of himself, no more earthly priests are now needed, which, as should be obvious, completely abrogates the Catholic priesthood. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> there should be no more priests. And uh, uh, seeing that there are priests... 
that there are priests who offer gifts according to the law, due to his eternal priesthood and the offering of himself in sacrifice, the law is done. So, eternal priesthood, there's the key word right there, eternal priesthood. There will be no other priest. And uh, there's no reason for it because now we have an eternal priesthood. We have an eternal covenant that can't be broke. God made this, God made the covenant with his son. Where all the other covenants he made with men got broken. You know, they were broken by men. Jesus isn't going to break that covenant between him and God. And uh, <clears throat> who, the Levitical priesthood, serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, refers to a suggestive replica which in fact had no substance within itself. So it's an example and shadow of heavenly things. It had no substance. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, this proclaims the fact that this was but a poor replica of the reality who is Christ. For see, said he, uh, Exodus 25, 40. Lacey? And uh, Numbers 8 and 4. Okay. And this work of candlestick was a heaping gold under the shaft, and under the flowers thereof was a heaping work, according unto the pattern of which the Lord had showed Moses. So he made the candlestick. Amen. That you make all things according to the pattern showed to you in the mount, based on what Lacey just said there. Meaning the tabernacle on earth was merely a replica of something far better in the heavens. Amen. <clears throat> Mediator. But now, since the cross, he has he, the Lord Jesus, obtained a more excellent ministry. The new covenant in Jesus' blood is superior and takes the place of the old covenant in animal blood. Animals could only cover sin until the Redeemer came to wash it away. I believe it was John the Baptist. I think it's in uh, John 1.29, is it? It says, uh, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It didn't say he covered them, he takes them away. He saw Jesus walking along the Jordan. He just come out of the wilderness. After spending 40 days in the wilderness, and he was walking along the Jordan. John was up there baptizing and he pointed and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. This is the answer that Israel had been looking for. It was right in front of them. Someone to take away their sins, that they would no longer have to sacrifice, that the, a true man of innocence would come, a man who was perfect, would die for their sins. And, uh, where are we at? This is, uh, okay, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Proclaims the fact that Christ officiates between God and man according to the arrangements of the new covenant. Christ officiates between God and man. So that's why when we pray, we pray to God the Father, right? In the name of Jesus. It basically means by the authority of Jesus because of what he did. So, Jesus is that mediator. So we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus because in his, by his authority because of what he did. His offering was accepted. And uh, basically when you pray in the name of Jesus that you believe in what Jesus did as your answer. And uh, so... Your faith is in what he did. And, uh, uh, which was established upon better promises. This presents the new covenant explicitly based on the cleansing and forgiveness of all sin, which, was, which the old covenant could not do. Cleansing and forgiveness of all sin. And let me tell you something. That cleansing is daily. 
Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. He didn't say, pick up your cross once. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. And uh, that's so important. Men need to be cleansed daily. That's why Jesus humbled himself and washed his disciples' feet. That it pertains to our walk. He didn't wash their hands because no more work was needed to be done. We work with our hands. Jesus didn't wash their hands. And uh, like when the priest would go into the Holy of Holies, he had to wash his hands and his feet. But the hands cleansing was no longer needed because the work was complete. Fred. Well, what we were saying, the fact that how we have to do this daily, so think about the fact that we're saying that tomorrow is not the opposite of us. So if you would forget today to do something you should have done daily, what if, what if tomorrow would be true? And then, you know, and, and for what you should have done today and didn't do, could actually cost you. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need to, we need that, man needs that daily washing because we we slip up and we sin, we say things, maybe said something that hurts someone's feelings or maybe we lashed out at someone or maybe we, uh, you know, there's gossip or, or just whatever in the uh, brain. And maybe someone got mad and they didn't speak language that they did not yeah. say. Or they saw a man's opinion on their brain in the Congress and they said something that shouldn't have said like the actual Repentance is, is repentance means that God was right and you were wrong. Yeah. And admitting your wrongness of your ways and asking God to forgive you. And it's something that we need to do daily. And uh, um, because when we think that we don't need to do that anymore, self righteousness has overtaken us. <laughs> and uh, it's no longer the righteousness of God, it's our own righteousness. God. Day, the sooner you, you the yeah, the sooner you realize the error of your ways. And if you're saved, and I hope that everyone here is, I believe we are, that's what the Holy Spirit came for, to convict. So when you sin, you feel the horribleness in your heart, you know, and you're sorry. And, you, and uh, so, yeah, um, there's a Things that I've done since I got saved that before I just didn't care. Where I was saved, and it, it didn't matter. It deserved what I just said to him. <laughs> it's not that way. I, I feel the conviction that was wrong. I've actually heard the voice of God say, You're wrong, Pastor. You, you didn't say you're sorry. That was not right. <laughs> you know? And, uh, so, uh, and sometimes, you know, the longer we stay in our anger, it may take a little while for that conviction to come, but it will come. <laughs> it, it will come. You're just resisting the spirit. Go ahead, Lacey. I have a question. Um, so when you say pick up your cross, do you mean like every morning when you pray, you Well, pick up of your cross daily. Um, to me, that means, and I've heard other ministers say that that you put your faith in what Jesus did. That's your answer. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. Um, the only way is to follow Jesus, to believe his suffering and what he did is the only way you can follow him. You can't follow him your way. Cross is God's way. The redemption, the cross is. So um, it's not a physical, thing, it's spiritual, but you know, I've seen people think that they have to uh, pick up a wooden cross and carry it and suffer. <laughs> no. Christ already suffered so that we wouldn't have to. And uh, Brad, is there anything you want to add to that? Maybe I want to talk more later. Hold up. Hold up. Brad, is there anything? Yeah, well, well I'm thinking that we understand what the cross of Christ represents and what he went to the cross for all mankind. So in essence, we're saying, okay, we pick up our cross daily, we're saying in effect the same thing as the cross was to Christ, we're taking on to understand what he did on that cross, so then we're saying what that cross represents 
We're nailing our thing to that cross. That's my answer for sin. Yeah, that's our answer for the sins that, that we may commit each day and not our way. So, yeah, I'm saying pick up your cross daily, which means to uh, basically, uh, like Brad just said, we uh, admit that that's our answer for sin. So we're going to sin. We're going to stumble. And, uh, so there's no other answer for it. Brandon? It basically comes up, you put God first for all that. Yep. That means, you know, if you're doing something on that you you make sure that you're not doing it now that time when it's going to get ready to stop what you're doing. Go back to it later. Right. You know, like, you know, like the other time when, you know, you can watch the Star Trek on one day, and that Star Trek thing, uh, he wasn't ready, you know. You need to make sure that on um, their Wednesday, you cannot watch the Star Trek thing a certain period of time, and it's time to go, you know. <laughs> okay. Verse 7 says, For if the first covenant had been faultless, proclaims the fact that the first covenant was definitely not faultless. As stated, it was based on animal blood, which was vastly inferior to the precious blood of Christ. As we said earlier, animal blood could not wash away the sins, take them away forever. Simply was a, I guess you could say, a down payment until Jesus came and fulfilled it and paid the debt. Does that make sense? Maybe it's like a warm up to get them used to. Yeah, to understand, right? Each lamb represented was a type of Christ that they slaughtered. That's why they would check the lamb for tumors, defects. It had to be a lamb without spot or blemish, usually one that's less than a year old. And uh, so, <clears throat> but it was a simply a covering, kind of like uh, paying the interest on the debt, but not actually paying the principal down. When Christ came, he paid it in full. The ransom was paid in full. Yeah. Lacey. I was listening to uh, the Jewish school and the constant feeling. Yep. And I'm thinking, like, so can you imagine how strong these men have been? Do this every single day. Yeah. Not what we consider a priest to be that, you know. Yeah. Well, they, uh, they're, not out, they're not out on top of animals, though. You're not going to talk about physical strength, but be able to mentally be able to do that. Constantly, constantly slaughtering animals. Yeah. You have to be raised that way. Scott? This is a new covenant. The ones that still touch the old covenant. Yeah, I'm like when the no <laughs> new covenant is in place, the ones that still follow the old covenant, they're really like classified. They're still following the old covenant. They're still following the old covenant. Like the tech again. Yeah, they're under the wall. They're blasphemy. Yeah, I'm following the covenant right now. What yeah, was that word he used? Blasphemy? I hear it. I hear it. He's blasphemy with me. They're found there. Sacrifice of animals, they shouldn't be Well, here's the thing they're not sacrificing because they don't have a temple. I mean, today. Well, it's still sacrificing. But, but after Christ died, yeah, they continued their sacrifices. and uh, But they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Now, the uh, Pharisees, they knew he was the Messiah and wanted no part of him. They knew. Uh, they wanted him gone because he was, they were going to take their jobs. <laughs> I got a question. Yeah. Do they still sacrifice? Well, as I said, that I don't believe they do. They don't have a time. Oh. And, I feel like they're red. Well. I still, still <laughs> so I don't believe Israel. And see, Israel was scattered. What was this? 70 AD, they were scattered all over the world. Just, uh, Jerusalem was uh, destroyed. And, yeah, I, Hmm? He did it through the uh, Roman general, uh, was it uh, Titus? Yeah, the Roman general. Uh, Jesus said it would happen. Every stone, no stone will be on the You know, every one of these would be destroyed. Well, I wonder what their reason was. I wonder what their reason was. 
Well, I guess it shows how far they've fallen from their ways. <laughs> and uh, where are we? Verse 7. Um, where am I at? Verse 8. Seven. Halfway through it. Then okay. Then should no place have been sought for the second, proclaiming the necessity of the new covenant. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, the first covenant was actually designed to glaringly portray the fault of the people, which it successfully did. That's what the law was. It pointed out all your faults and offered no way of salvation. It simply was a mirror image. When you looked into it, you seen what a sinner you really are. Because you realize, well, I broke that, I did that, I did that wrong, I broke that. And that's basically what laws do. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, behold, oh, let's get that. He said, Jeremiah 31 31. He said, in Christ, for this city hath been to me an provocation of mine, of mine anger, and of my fury from the day that they built it. Even unto this day, that yes. I should be removed, that I should be removed from before my face. Okay, so behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with it the house of Judah. The new covenant was in Christ, and when He did at the cross, regrettably, Israel rejected Him. We just talked about that; they rejected Him. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Refers to the law of Moses, which was given some 50 days after Israel was delivered from Egypt. Now why 50 days? What does that 50 days represent? Where was going with it? 50 days. Now, so Moses, the lawgiver, came down from the mountain. They were delivered out of Egypt. Fifty days later, Moses came down from the mountain with the tablets to give them the law. Fifty days from the deliverance out of Egypt. And it was fifty days from the day that Christ rose from the grave when he sent the Holy Spirit came down. So, makes sense? So the law was given 50 days after deliverance, and 50 days after Christ rose from the grave, he sent the Holy Spirit to come to them. And uh, where are we? Okay, 50 days. Okay. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, <laughs> speaks, speaks of the immaturity of Israel at that time. Consequently, she was treated as a minor. Think about that. He said that he took them by the hand and had to lead them along like little children because they've been enslaved their whole lives. Every one he brought came out of Egypt was born a slave. They had no real they they needed somebody to guide them, hold their hand. Okay. Except for there were some still believe that but they don't. Still believe what? Christ is not the Messiah. Well yeah. So most Jews. Most Jews. never gone away. So Anybody way. that is a true uh, Jew of circumcision and believes that does not believe Christ was their Messiah. Until the second coming, then they'll. What's that? Until the second coming. Then. At the second coming, they will look up to the sky and realize their Savior. They'll cry out to their Savior, and He will save them. And, uh, um, but yeah, they're a uh, majority of now. There's some that call themselves Messianic Jews. No, you're one or the other. You're either of the tribe of Israel or you are of Christ. So they, they don't want to let go of their Jewish traditions, but they want to believe in Jesus. And, you know, God uh, shows a mercy and grace, I guess. Right? I'm not to get mad at you, man. Well, I got to put this question. 
believe it in their, their personal belief, but their elders don't want them to trust them. But they could be. Them, you know, it might be open to the idea of well, could the be. elders keep them from thinking of that. Possibly that they uh, they don't want to express it in their uh, to their family what they believe, and uh, but more Jews are converting over to Christianity all the time. Uh, the the one that's probably done the most work in our lifetime of that is Sid Roth. He's done a lot of work. He was born a Jew, and now he's given his heart to Christ. And he's done a lot of work over there in Israel and uh, showing them who the Messiah is. <laughs> Well, Christ, yeah, well, and this gospel must be preached in all the world. And uh, that's the Great Commission. And it, it's uh, just a couple of years ago, Franklin Graham went up into North Vietnam and preached the gospel that had never been done before in North Vietnam. But they opened their, they opened their borders to it. Praise God for that. And I mean, hundreds of thousands of people came to hear what Franklin Graham had to say. And uh, we look at all the evangelizing that was done in the 80s. You know, uh, Brother Swagger evangelized all over the world, in South America, Africa, and uh, just in Asia, everywhere, Russia. I mean, it was just amazing some of the evangelizing that went on in the 80s. And, uh, there's been a lot of it that's going on. Praise God. Um, and God gets the glory for all of that. You know, um, <clears throat> now it's, I think there's less healed evangelizing going on and more satellite yeah. through television. And, and the Bibles Commission, getting Bibles in the hands of people. Uh, I believe Dave Reber that's coming here at the end of October is working with the North Vietnamese and getting a Bible, King James, translated into Vietnamese because they don't have one. And he's working with uh, them now to get that done. Um, <clears throat> okay, because they continued not in my covenant. Israel was not true to the covenant regarding the old law. And I regarded them not, says the Lord. Israel rejected God's first covenant, so God rejected them. Think about that. Israel rejected God's first covenant, so God rejected them. And that's true today. If you reject his son, what other choice does he have? You know, God is a long-suffering God, okay? But it reaches a point. I believe, look at Sodom and Gomorrah. I believe that went on for like 300 years, the Lord tarried. And finally their sins had piled so high, it reached the throne of God. And God said, enough is enough. There was the hope, all hope was gone for Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, and he tried, you know, but you know, he's, he's long suffering. And it tells me like a father thinks about finding what comes through like a con, you know, and he goes and turns out to find you know what their story get out. And you're one so when you break the two right one and you come back, if you're not gonna do right, fine, don't come back. Right. And not to do nothing, you know, we're just losing time. So if money got them thinking, am I stupid and all this? Okay, fine, tell me out. Not back to you, my God. Well it again, God doesn't move. He's pretty stationary. We walk away from him. And in a sense, we re people reject God. In a sense, until they repent, they can't come back. Until they, re they have to repent. And so, uh, Brett. Well, on this particular point, I'm wondering in today's time, think about how many different faiths or religions there are that are not based on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah. on the cross. How would God be working at those? Does he not reject those as they stand in what they believe in their, their, uh, their belief right now? Or until they come to the fullness of what he actually did on the cross, yeah. 
Isn't he rejected them? Well, it says here, the word says, uh, and I regarded them not, says the Lord. And uh, because they continued not in my covenant, they did not continue in God's ways. And so I, I regarded them not, says the Lord. So are you asking like Hindus, if they continue, or Buddhists continue in their ways? And uh, I guess that's why it says this gospel must be preached to all the world. Then the end will come. Everyone will be given that opportunity. And uh, but God judges the heart of men. He knows what's in the heart. We can't see what's in everybody's heart. God can. And uh, it's really about rejection. Now, the one thing I have to say that uh, puts more people, sends more people to hell is self-righteousness. Right? No, good. Good. It's pride. The, the original sin of Lucifer, pride, and it's self-righteousness. I am my own savior. And that's just it. I remember, I'm going to tell a quick story. It's, it's, it's really sad, but it's shocking. A friend of mine was telling me about how this older gentleman was in the hospital and he was dying. And he was just a, he was an ordinary guy, and his family called in a pastor to come in and kind of speak to him as he was his days were numbered. He was down to the final days or hours. And, and the pastor came into the hospital room to speak to him and he told him, get out of here, and he cussed him out and just called him filthy names, he didn't want no part of it. Didn't want to hear what this pastor had to say. Didn't want to talk about God. But we ran him off. And uh, the family, when he passed, the family asked him if he would do the funeral, officiate the funeral. He said, yeah, I can do that. And so when he began the funeral, he said, before we start today, <laughs> this is he says, I would like everyone to reach into their pocket or their purse. If you have a lighter, pull out your lighter. And he said, now hold up like this. I want you to light it. Everybody's holding their light. He's, everyone's seen concerts where people hold up their light. Everybody's doing this. I want you to put your hand over it to feel that. That's exactly what this man is feeling over his entire body right now in the pit of hell. Yeah. Everybody's jaw just dropped. He was, telling, he was telling the truth, though. The man rejected the word of the Lord. And uh, I wasn't at the funeral, but I had a couple of different people tell me that were there. And they just they couldn't believe it. And, uh, yeah. Um, as I don't do heathen funerals. I don't like to do heathen funerals. And uh, so um, I've done them, but I don't like it. I just, Anyway, uh, but uh, does what is how I'm not the one to judge someone's where they go <coughs> salvation. We never know what a person has said if they've taken their last breath. You know, yeah, yeah we're not the judge, right? We don't know. You don't know. They can say something. The last day in their life, they say, "God, please forgive me." You don't have to be there. So that's why we have no right to say that person went to hell, this person went to heaven. Yeah. It's, it's in God. It is. And, you know, but now there's been people stood around people that have died and people were kicking and screaming as they were dying. And they were, I've heard of people claiming that they could feel the flames burning. Them. And uh, others saying that they, they were saying that they were going into darkness. Why is it so dark? Why is there, where am I going? They were crying out. Not a good thing, you know, for the outer darkness. But, uh, but that's all up to God, you know. The, uh, he is the judge. All we need to do is learn from what we hear and see and what we read and learn from it. Open eyes, open ears. That's right. Um, where was the uh, Pastor 50? Yeah, 10. For this covenant that I that I will make 
with the house of Israel, refers to, as stated, the new covenant. After those days, refers to the old covenant having run its course, which it did at the time of the cross, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, proclaims in abbreviated detail the glorious fact of what the new covenant would do because the sin debt was paid by Christ on the cross, which made it possible for the Holy Spirit to abide forever in the hearts and lives of believers. John 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Refers to relationship under the new covenant that was not possible under the old covenant. Zechariah 8.8. 8. And I will bring them to me to the Lord in the midst of the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be, I will be their God, and they will be my children. Amen. Thank you for that. Relationship under the new covenant, and that's really what it's about. Do I have a relationship with my Lord and Savior? Or do I just call on Him when I get in trouble? Christ paid a heavy price that we could be forgiven. That we can have that relationship with Him. He paid a big price for that. And so we should all have a relationship in this new covenant with our Savior. And, and that's, you know, daily. That's not just once in the morning. That's, it's throughout the day. And sometimes those prayers are just, thank you, Lord. When you see things happen, and what, is the, what does Isaiah tell us? I believe it's Isaiah 30, verse 6. He says, put on the garment of Praise for the spirit of heaviness. Even praise him in the worst time. Give praise to God because he's going to lift you out of the mire that you're stuck in. Whatever's going on, praise him because he's about, you're about to see a move of God. Fill us. have a relationship with someone we have to talk to. Yep. Imagine that. <laughs> you're trying to have a relationship with God, but no prayer life. You don't pray, and uh, it's like having a relationship with your father, your parents, but you come home, you never speak to them, you know, unless you want something. I think every one of us as parents know what that feels like. Our kids don't call us unless they want something. They're Brad. That means you desire no communication with the father. Yeah. No communication. And uh, desires we have to have, and our communication is through prayer, and praise, and even through worship. When we come in here, we sing songs, and we worship the Lord. And you know, when I was talking the other day about this, when we begin our church service, when y'all come in the house of God on Sunday morning, we should be on fire for God. We should be ready to just jump up and down and shout praises to God because we're alive, we're breathing air, he is, and He has forgiven us. He paid the price that we could come in here in the house of God. That we live, praise God, we live in America, the land of the free for now. <laughs> you know? And that we have. We have a wonderful cook who takes care of us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. <laughs> you know, and, and we have wonderful people come in here, clean the church. Praise God. And, uh, you know, God has uh, given us this house to worship Him in. Praise the Lord. He keeps the lights on. He keeps the heat on during the winter. Praise the Lord. And, uh, but we should come in here on fire for God. Not sit here with long faces like, when's it going to be over? <laughs> <clears throat> okay.
okay. Where are we at? Revelation about a new covenant. Is that possible under the old covenant? Let me see. Right, second, right, eight, eight. So verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. It refers to the complicated process of the old covenant. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. This presents the fact that the Holy Spirit will teach every believer, as he does, and which Jesus also said would be. John 16, verses 13 through 15. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall, and he will show the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto me. All things that the Father hath, uh, all the things the Father hath are mine. Therefore, I, <coughs> therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. Amen. Everything comes to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. He's present with us. He'll reveal all truth in the Spirit of truth. And everything that the Lord tells you through the Holy Spirit, you'll know it's Him because you'll find you know, He never speaks outside of Scripture. He'll never speak outside of the Word of God. So if there's something you feel the Lord has given you or told you, you'll find Scripture that, that lines up with that. And, uh, you may have to dig a little bit, but usually not. I mean, when the Lord has spoken to me, I usually find the scripture quick. Usually I open up my Bible, boom, there it is. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. The cross made this possible. Amen. Merciful to their unrighteousness. <laughs> How wonderful is that? That God will show us mercy even in our unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more due to the cross. Sins and iniquities no longer exist, at least for those who trust in Christ. Amen. And it's because of what? We trust in what Jesus did. That sacrifice. That sacrifice, what he did. That these sins are washed away. And in that he said a new covenant, all in Christ and what he did at the cross. He, God, has made the first old. It was designed to be temporary. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Since the cross which introduced the new covenant, there is no more need for the old, which is vastly inferior. Amen. Praise God. We should be praising, coming in here Sunday morning, praising God that John 3 16, for God so loved the world. The whole world. Doesn't matter what color your skin is, where you were born, how much money you got in the bank, or what kind of car you drive. God so loved the world that he gave his son. He spared not his son. And whosoever believes in him, whosoever believeth in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that believing involves relationship. Relationship with your Savior. I read your book Every every person has a purpose for God. He's got a purpose for every person that's in the world. He just got to accept it. I want to do it. He did it. He thinks that he did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, have any testimony you want to share? Brand. I don't have to go on me tonight. Well, praise the Lord. 
over on the other side of Jackson. We went to school together. And uh, we had something in common. We were both bikers. And, and uh, we spent two years together in the classroom. And uh, he, uh, he, he, he pastored over at Marshall Assembly of God for two years. And, and he's moved on to a, something else. And he posted on Facebook for prayers for his brother who lives in Florida. He's got three young children, look to be anywhere from eight to 12 years old. Um, that he was in the hospital with COVID, and the doctor said they've done all they could do. And, and then he's only, the guy looks like he's in his 30s, and uh, late 30s, and uh, this morning he posted that his brother went to be with the Lord this morning. Yeah. It was really kind of shocking. I mean, the guy, would look, but the pictures, he was in great shape. I mean, he wasn't overweight, looked healthy, but he died. And, uh, so, I'm going to pray for his family. And, uh, um, and then I'm sure what I guess it would be the Marine family. Uh, Eric Marine was the guy I went to school with. And, uh, but it would kind of shock me. He went, he went down fast. It's crazy how some people get coronavirus and COVID, and it's like they shake it up like it was just a cold. And other people in great health. I was talking with David Borg today, and he told me how. People, he's known people that had absolutely horrible health. They were just in horrible physical condition, just unhealthy. And they got COVID and they just shook it off. <laughs> and uh, like it was nothing. And the people that are physically fit, like this guy, Eric's brother was, died. Strange, isn't it? It's a, it's a mystery to me. But, um, well, it's, uh, Dan. Uh, yeah, this Saturday night, a buddy of mine, Harold Armstrong, I got him into riding his bike and just wanted to get a Harley, got a cup and find a nice street glide down the free river, a little crap anyway. His wife called me after he got out of church and said, we went to sleep after he cleaned his bike and his old Cadillac, he bought an old plastic Cadillac and just fell asleep and died in the city. What all about wrong? Wow. I went to sleep and died, 65 years old. Wow. Uh, I've known him for 20 some years. He, his, well, his cousin called me and said, Dan, I got a cousin in Michigan that wants a, a family who wants to learn how to ride a motorcycle and, and he wants a Harley. I told him, I, so I called him up and I've known him ever since. We were a lot together. Not this last year or two too much, but for the COVID stuff. Harold Armstrong, just pray for the Armstrong family, Sherry Armstrong, and, and then uh, Kendrick, our, our grandson from the uh, Philippines, has got a bowl of uh, some bad stuff going on with his teeth. So he's going to have to, he has to go to Dr. Martin, and have about six or eight cabins, and he's going to have to clean up the and stuff. But he's having a lot of hard times, so. Uh, to pray for him that tomorrow when he goes see the medicine, to pick him all up. They got pretty good dental. You got you drink a lot of soda pop over I well, I don't I don't think they are. They drink a lot of water and stuff. I mean, he might be big, I don't know. But uh they don't have a lot of soda over there, No, they got it, but they're drinking Coke is I think they're drinking mainly <laughs> water <laughs> in the house and drinking water. I know Native Americans and the uh, Eskimos had perfect teeth. I mean, not, maybe not perfectly in line or anything, but just they had all their teeth into their 90s and yeah, I such. But the, introduce, but the introduction of Coca Cola and whiskey changed all that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they had uh, pretty good teeth. Teeth are meant to last our whole life. But but the stuff we're putting in our mouths pop and uh, all this candy and stuff. I'm good, sure. Brad. Well, I got a testimony to be praying for my wife and my son. Is. Yeah. He's doing great for this. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the reason of our God. Yeah. It, it works. Amen. It works. It does. If prayer, 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 prayer changes. Prayer. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Amen. Amen. And uh, make her legacy. I would like to tell you, 
or for um, the family kids, for the children. But uh, my aunt just passed away this week, and uh, she had I was talking to the ladies yesterday, and then I had a service for them. I was going to have a funeral. It's going to have a small service. That's happening a lot lately. A lot of people I know that's died in the last year or two, they just cremated them. Cremated them. Well, something like that, and I'll park you. So. Well, I think, I think a lot of it is, it's, it's so expensive. Well, yeah, and it's so that stuff, people are scared to be around the place. Yep, they're so oh, scared. Yeah. Well, people got the shots of getting that stuff. Well, she said it's right. scared about it. She said it's 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 scared about it. down there who gave him his notice. He'd been there like 20 years as a college professor down in Louisiana. And, uh, his plan was to go full-time evangelist. And uh, he, uh, um, it didn't seem things that he planned just didn't seem to be working out. And I won't go into all the details, but he was hoping to use uh, SBN and JSM as a launching pad for his ministry. And, it didn't seem to be working out, and then uh, he called me today and told me that uh, he got a phone call. He got a call from Brother Swagger, said that it's all good. So and they're going to, uh, as long as he's living in Louisiana, they plan on moving to Florida by the first of the year, sometime in January. Said, as long as you're here in Baton Rouge, we're going to support you and give you whatever you need in your ministry. So. Praise God for that, because that was, uh, you know, so he didn't want to leave for Florida on bad terms, you know, and uh, so, but uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. He was really pleased, and Martha was pleased about that. Anyone else? Uh, <coughs> uh, James, right here, man, what's up? Harris. What's the name of the Paris. Paris? Paris. Yeah. Paris. Paris. Paris family. James uh, lost a cousin, is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of young too. Did you say less than sixty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we'll pray over the food. Anyone else? Okay. Let's uh let's put this before the Lord, but let's before we do that, let's all know that we believe. That we have faith that God is hearing our prayers. The saying the words won't do it. You gotta believe in your heart. God's gonna answer these prayers. Scott. Steve on our Steve, yes. And uh, you know, Steve is uh, diagnosed with cancer. And uh, so we're going keep, to we're gonna keep Steve on the uh, prayer list. And, uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in a prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Father, we pray because your Son, Jesus Christ, who we believe in, we put our faith in what he did. Hallelujah. Lord, we surrender these petitions over to you. We put them in the hands of the Master. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we pray for, uh, as uh, someone mentioned, for Carrie, who's in the hospital. We don't know the reason why, but Lord, you know all things. You know exactly what she needs. Praise God. And so, Lord, we pray for her deliverance from whatever it is that's ailing her. Hallelujah. We pray for her healing. Lord, we pray for this family, the Marine family who lost their brother. Father, we put them in your hands for comforting of your spirit, Lord, to help this family, help these children that lost their father, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And, and Lord, just be with them, we pray. The Armstrong family that lost a loved one, Lord, we pray for the, your spirit to comfort them, Lord, to comfort his wife who lost her husband, Lord. And I pray for the salvation of these families, Lord, that if anyone is the unsaved, Lord, that they will turn to you. Lord, to know that you are God. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we just put these families in your hands, and we pray for Kendrick, for his healing as he goes to the dentist tomorrow. Lord, we pray that, they, that you have the answer. We know you do, Lord. I pray that Kendrick release this to you, that surrender this to you, and show him that possibly if there's an error in his ways, if the things that he's consuming in his body that's causing this, so, Lord, we pray that that be the case, that you reveal that to him. To put an end to the suffering that he's dealing with right now. And so, Father, we pray for his healing. And, Lord, we pray for the uh, Kelly family. Lord, uh, I don't quite recall exactly everything that's going on. Oh, it was uh, Lacey had mentioned her uh, aunt. Lord, we pray for the Kelly family, Lord, that uh, the uh, recent loss of uh, their aunt, Lord, we put them in your hands. Lord, we pray that we know that she's with you now, Lord, and the suffering is gone. And so, Lord, we pray that this family, Lord, that they suffer no longer in her death, Lord, that, that they come to you and to know that you are God. And, Lord, so comfort them by your spirit, we pray. And, Lord, we pray these unspoken requests of things that we don't want to talk about to everyone, Lord, but we want to share that with you. So, Father, we, in a prayer of faith, Lord, we pray for these answers to unspoken requests. I think we all have something that we don't want to share with everyone in the church, in this congregation. But, Lord, we want to put that in your hands. So, Lord, we just pray for the answer, the answer to come to these unspoken requests. And, Father, we pray for, uh, uh, for Becky, my wife Becky, for her healing and what she's going through right now, Lord. Lord, we put it in your hands, Lord. In a prayer of faith and belief, Lord, for her healing. By his stripes we are healed, your word tells us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. We thank you for what you did at Calvary, Lord. Lord, that you are the answer for all things. And so, Lord, we, we put her in your hands for healing. We pray, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, we just trust in you. She's in the hands of the master. Hallelujah. This illness be gone in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. Father, we, we pray for uh, the Paris family. Lord, as James had mentioned, who had lost his cousin, Lord, we just pray that, she, that this person is in the arms of the Lord now. And Lord, that we pray that the family understand this and comfort them in this time of need. Lord, that your mercy and your grace be upon them. All those who have lost loved ones, Lord, I pray for your mercy and your grace and your love to be poured out to each and every family member. That they, they see the evidence of what you're doing, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, we pray for uh, Steve, our brother. We pray for his healing. Lord, we stand on your word for our brother Steve. Lord, what your word tells us in Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. We stand on your word, Lord, and believe. Lord, we pray that, that you comfort him in his pain, to take that away, and the Lord to heal his body. Let this healing begin now in the name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, heal his body in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. 
Praise God. Praise God. And Lord, we we pray, we thank you for this food here tonight. We thank you for the spiritual food, your word. And Lord, we thank you for the physical food to nourish our bodies. I ask for your blessing on that. Lord, your blessing on your word here tonight. I pray that this word has reached the hearts of those who heard it, Lord. And to give us a greater understanding who you are, Lord. And I just pray that we as we partake in this food here tonight, Lord, that your blessing be upon it and upon each and every one who receives. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.